Welcome to We've Got a Country to Say, brought to you by my friends at investwhyrefi.com. Invest in America like I do, and by Freedom Chat. Freedom Chat is true end-to-end -end encryption, no storage of messages on the server, and no commercial use of user data. Speak freely and message privately. Download the app today and subscribe to my Freedom Chat channel at Larry Elder for exclusive posts and never-before-seen content. We also thank Epic Times, Old Glory Bank, Patriot Mobile, and Birch Gold. Make sure to follow or subscribe to my channel on whatever platform you are using, whether X, YouTube, Facebook, or Rumble, and be sure to patronize our sponsors. And if you don't patronize our sponsors, <laughs> well... We know where you live. Attention, black men. Kamala has your back. Kamala Harris has officially released her agenda for black men. And yes, you heard me right. This is an agenda that is specific to a certain race and sex group. We started crazy, we're gonna continue crazy. She's apparently gonna provide 1 million loans that are fully forgivable only to black male entrepreneurs to the tune of $20,000. And I'm gonna help Kamala out on this one. A loan is something that has to be paid back. If you're offering people a forgivable loan, you're just giving them money, probably to buy the votes that you're losing. And it's not only that, apparently Kamala is going to give black men their own educational and mentorship programs. They're going to have their cryptocurrency investments protected and they get a national health initiative that focuses on them. And lastly, she's going to legalize recreational marijuana and get black men jobs in the industry because we know black men love to light up, right? She knows black men are fed up with her and unconvinced of her ability to lead, given that she's been a leader these past three, four years, and her way of gaining their vote back is discrimination and a new Jim Crow era. One more minor detail. It's illegal to discriminate based on race, something called the 14th Amendment. More on Kamala later on in the show. How pathetic is alleged comedian Jimmy Kimmel, who said this about Trump's rally in Philly that took an unexpected turn. I am genuinely questioning his mental health. He's been doing some really weird stuff lately. Last night in Pennsylvania, he held a doozy of a town hall moderated by noted puppy assassin Christy Nome. She traveled up <laughs> from North Dakota. What a mess this was. First of all, he can't seem to remember that the election is November 5th, not January 5th. And the Kamala Harris campaign put out the following tweet. Trump appears confused, lost, and frozen on stage as multiple songs play for 30 plus minutes and the crowd pours out of the venue early, end of quote. But Kimmel's own network, ABC, tells the real story about exactly what happened. Town Hall event in Pennsylvania took an unusual turn after he was interrupted twice by medical emergencies in the room. Trump stopped taking questions and stood on stage for nearly 45 minutes listening to his soundtrack. The crowd slowly dispersed, but many stayed for what became an impromptu indoor concert. ABC News senior national correspondent Terry Moran joins me now for more from Pennsylvania. Hey, Terry. Hey, Alex. So, Al so Donald Trump came here to the suburbs of Philadelphia, one of the critical battlegrounds in this battleground state, uh, looking for votes. And it was scheduled to be this town hall event where he would be taking questions and and listening to voters and it turned into something else as you say when the candidate turned into a dj donald trump in his 11th trip to must win pennsylvania urged his supporters to turn out on election day we win pennsylvania we win the whole thing. yes in a town hall style event in the western suburbs of philadelphia the former president stuck to his top issues attacking vice president harris over inflation and immigration he pledged to shut the southern border end russia's war in ukraine lower prices at the grocery store and bring down interest rates to two percent while providing few details on how he'd accomplish all that people don't think of grocery you know it sounds like not such an important word when you talk about homes and everything else right but more people tell me about grocery bills, where the price of bacon, the price of lettuce, the price of tomatoes, they tell me. Uh, and we're going to do a lot of things. But then, 30 minutes in, two attendees suffered medical emergencies. A doctor, please. Doctor. The incidents shifted the mood, prompting Trump to cut the question short and instead play some of his favorite music. How about this? We'll play YMCA and we'll go home. Trump kept DJing, and most of his supporters stayed for another 30 minutes of his playlist. 
Well, in certain quarters of social media, people had a field day with that. And I guess on the screens, it, it might have looked quite strange. Inside that hall, however, people were having a good time. What can I tell you? It, it did not seem uh, out of the ordinary. It seemed almost intimate. And at the end, Trump did something he very rarely does. He came down off the stage and mingled with his supporters. He was signing autographs and shaking hands and the like. Were you lying then? Are you lying now? Or are you not, in fact, a chronic and habitual liar? Hi, folks. Do you trust this economy? What if you could receive a strong fixed rate of return that's not correlated to the stock market or the Fed? And what if you were in control? You could turn your income on or off, compound it, whatever you choose. What if your interest was compounded daily, you were paid monthly, and there were absolutely no fees? And what if you could have peace of mind because there was no attack on your principal if you ever needed your money back? Well, folks, there is an investment with all of these features. Investors all over the country are earning a high fixed rate of return with y -Refi, and they don't care about what happens with the stock market or the Fed. And best of all, they receive their statement every month with no surprises. Would you like some more information? Just call 877-80-INVEST, that's 877-80-INVEST, or log on to investyrefi.com, that's investyrefi.com. Why Refi, do well by doing good. Former President Barack Obama reemerges, race card in hand, and chastises blacks, particularly black men, aka the brothers, for considering voting for Trump. Just say some, speak some truths if you don't mind. Because my understanding, based on reports I'm getting from campaigns and communities, is that um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly and say that when you have a choice that is this clear, when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences, who's had to work harder and do more and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land. And that's on one side. And on the other side, you have someone who has consistently shown disregard, not just for the communities, but for you as a person. And you're thinking about sitting out? <laughs> but, you know, because of Putin might be. <laughs> and you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. Because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly now, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. Mm -hmm. And I think any 
anybody you are talking to in a barber shop, anybody you are talking to in your house, in your family, at a, at a, at church, who is coming with that kind of attitude, I think you have to ask them, well, how can that be? Because the women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time. They've been raising us and working and having our backs. And when we get in trouble and the system's not working for us, they're the ones who are out there marching and protesting. And so now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. In other words, if you don't know whether you want to vote for Trump or Kamala, you ain't black. And you ain't black. And may God bless America. All right, this one. A couple introductions with the chat here. This is John O'Rourke. Nice to meet you, John. Mr. Ian Roberts. Right. Nice to meet you. Peter Tensio. All right. Nice to meet you. Jerome Smith. Come on, brother. What's up, fam? <laughs> you know this. Keith Williamson. Nice to meet you. Mary right. Woodbury. Nice to meet you. Jay Martell. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Tasha Robbins. Come on, come oh. on, come on. <laughs> feel that? Emily George. Right. All right. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Daryl Stokes. Come on. What's up, fam? How you doing? All right. Never forget about that, because that's all we got. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. Oh, bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> Starting from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. Nice to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you. One eighth black. Afternoon, my octoroon. Come on, bring yeah, it in there. I'm, Tuck that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in there, dog. I'm in there, dog. I'm in there, dog. Former President Trump had a thought about this race card business. Televisa Univision revealed Latinos are rejecting the Democrats, their, their yeah. culture of death, their open borders, and everything yeah. you and I have discussed. In turn, they're in historic numbers supporting you. But that's led some left wing Latinos like uh, NPR's Maria Inaosa to claim that. Hispanics who support Trump want to be, quote, white. Joe Biden said, if you don't know whether you're for me or you're for Trump, you then you ain't, ain't black. black. What do you think about a Democrat that would rob an American of their heritage simply because that American doesn't want to vote Democrat? Well, they're probably racist to start off with. Biden's probably racist, but they're probably racist to start off with. Uh, I heard him when he made that remark a while ago, and it's a, you know, it was a stupid remark then. And actually, it wasn't well received by black people at all. And speaking about the brothers, y'all. Kamala supports taxpayer funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. Uh, for prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. Hell no, I don't want my taxpayer dollars going I, to that. Kamala supports transgender sex changes in jail with our money. Kamala even supports letting biological men compete against our girls in their sports. Kamala is for they them. President Trump is for you. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Damn! So, Obama tells the brothers to vote for Kamala because she's a black woman. And in his words, women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time, end of quote. Curious, is this how Obama talks to the brothers down at the barbershop in Martha's Vineyard? Of course, Obama wouldn't employ the brothers to vote for, say, Republican Condi Rice if she were the GOP nominee. If people voted based on their race, Obama never could have been elected state senator, U.S. senator, or for crying out loud, president. But Obama tells the brothers to vote for Harris because you have somebody who grew up like you, end of quote. That's quite a statement from someone who grew up unlike anyone most people know. Obama, born in Hawaii, Mom obtained a Ph.D. in anthropology, dad economics degree from Harvard. Obama's mom remarried an oil company executive and Barack lived in Indonesia for a few years 
where he attended a private school set up by the stepfather's oil company for the children of its executives. Obama's mom sends him back to Hawaii because she wants him to get an even better education. There he lived with his white maternal grandparents. His grandmom became a bank executive. Grandpa was a successful salesman. In Hawaii, Obama attended the prestigious Punahou Prep School, where the tuition for the year 2023-2024 is $30,480, not including student activity fees. Obama does his first two years of college at an elite school in Los Angeles before getting his undergrad degree from Columbia and his law degree from Harvard. If, according to Obama, people should vote for those who grew up like you, why should the brothers, and for that matter, most anybody else, have voted for Obama given how he grew up? So much for content of character and not color of skin. Obama wants Jim Crow 2.0. I want Barack Obama and every Democrat out there to know you do not own black people. We are not slaves. Our chains are gone. We do not owe you anything. And we don't have to give you an account for how we choose to vote. The Democrats then unleashed Barack Obama into the wild to shame us black men for not supporting Kamala Harris, despite the fact that she's yet to unveil any policies that represent our interests. But if it was a white politician shaming other white men for not voting based on identity politics, y'all will call him racist. Why is it okay for Barack Obama, Kamala Harris, and all these other people that supposedly look like me, why is it okay for them to get on TV and shame me for not voting for them simply because they look like me? That's racist, brother. I don't know how else to put it. That is racism. I don't have to vote for Kamala because she's quote unquote black. Just like I shouldn't have voted for yo because you got up there, you tap dance for the establishment, and you ain't do a for the black people that put you in office. You brother. You ain't did a thing for us in the eight years that you was in the White House. And you think you gonna pop up during an election year and try to scold black men for not wanting to vote for your candidate? Have you lost your mind? I spent seven years of my life fighting your administration, you and Biden, by the way, for my husband's military benefits. My daughter died because of Obamacare. I don't give a f about you. This message is for President Obama. First and foremost, you're not going to tell me what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. Number one, I ain't going to vote for Kamala Harris. I think that she's going to make a bad president. She's a bad vice president. Everything she does, she tries to politicize it. And she hasn't shown the fact that she wants to put America first ever. So I'm not voting for that individual. <laughs> what you thought you was doing, Barack Obama? Boy, you didn't step out there. All you did was black men off, bro. All you did was black men off. Why y'all think the American people, still, why y'all think the Democrat Party own black folk? The Democrat Party don't own black folks, bruh. What you thought you was doing with that? We see the play. We know we see the play. Kamala Harris is losing. She's not going to win. The audacity of you to say to us that we are required and we better vote for Kamala Harris and that we don't want to see a woman in a position of power. You are a liar. And so I'm convinced that we'll be able to stop this because it is the most pernicious thing. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. I mean, this is gigantic. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are concerned about the invasion of privacy that is currently going on by the Biden administration? Biden's DOJ is invading individuals' private messages and targeting them based on their political affiliation, and that's why I partnered with Freedom Chat, a private social messaging app that, like me, believes privacy is your fundamental human right. Freedom Chat has variable end-to-end -end encryption, built-in screenshot protection, no storage of messages on their servers, and no commercial use of user data. I'm such a fan of Freedom Chat, in fact, that I have created my own private channel that you can subscribe to for exclusive content, including never seen images, videos, and posts. Simply download the app, or if you're on Android, join their waitlist. Search for my channel and subscribe. No one can see the channels that you are subscribed to or the posts that you react to. It's your own perfectly curated private news feed. Speak freely and message privately with Freedom Chat. Download the app today and subscribe to my channel at Larry Elder for exclusive posts and never-for-seen content. 
And you know the Harris campaign believes Obama went too far because two days later on CNN, this Harris spokesman wouldn't repeat the slur that Obama lodged against black men. Does the campaign agree with what former President Obama suggested that black men may be reluctant to vote for Harris because she's a woman? He thinks that's part of the struggle. Listen, I think what uh, President Obama was talking about again was uh, the stark choice, right? You have Donald Trump, who as a candidate, he definitely was talking about a stark a choice, but person, very clearly he was suggesting, Michael, that a, he said, I mean, president. I have the. I have the soundbite right here. He says, part of it makes me think that, well, you aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president, so you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think a sign of strength, because that's what being a man is, putting women down, that's not acceptable. It's very clear what he, that he's suggesting that sexism is at play for why some black men he can, he's concerned aren't going to turn out. Yeah, and he was also very clear that there's one candidate in this race who actually has the interests of black men at heart, and that's Vice President Harris. He was also equally clear so do you agree that, that it is black is men is who are like capable Obama of suggested? exercising our power to decide the fate of this election. Uh, black men are going to do that, and they're going to do it on behalf of the vice president, because this campaign is going to make sure that black men understand the stakes. They're going to make sure this campaign is going to make sure the black men understand that there is a candidate and Vice President Harris who is actually fighting for them. And yeah, we're going to make sure the black men also understand that in Donald Trump, this is a person who, whether he was a landlord who refused to rent to black tenants, whether he was uh, the person who stepped into public life by calling for the execution of five innocent black and Latino men, whether it's somebody who, yes, spread the racist birther conspiracy theory and took it mainstream in American politics. Uh, is somebody who was repeatedly disrespected and denigrated black men throughout his life. And he was able to return to power, uh, whether it's repealing the ACA, repealing the $35 a month insulin cap, uh, right, or, as he said yesterday, going after the enemy through with it, from within, uh, whether it be with the police, the National Guard, or even the military, we're going to make sure that black men and all Americans understand the fundamental stakes in this election. It's, very, it's a very serious moment, and we're going to make sure that this choice is absolutely clear. Let's move on to something else, but just to my question, does the campaign think sexism is part of the reason why black men are reluctant or showing some reluctance to vote for Kamala Harris? No, what we're focused on, what the campaign is focused on, understands is that for too long, uh, too many black men have not felt as though candidates running for office have centered uh, our concerns, have centered our anxieties, have centered our dreams and our aspirations. And the vice president, long before she was ever a candidate, that's exactly what she has done. Yeah. But do you believe the reluctance of black men to support Harris is because of sexism? Wouldn't answer. It's just a variation of what Joe Biden said. If you don't know whether or not you want to vote for me or Trump, you ain't black. If you don't vote for Kamala Harris, you're sexist. Say it again, Joe. President Biden had a, a new attack on Republicans during a fundraiser last night. The president said, quote, what we're seeing now is the beginning or the death knell of an extreme MAGA philosophy. It's not just Trump. It's the entire philosophy that underpins the, I'm going to say something, it's like semi-fascism. That's a quote. The MAGA Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and economic security. They're a threat to our very democracy. They refuse to accept the will of the people. They embrace, embrace political violence. They don't believe in democracy. Say that one more time. Okay, he will. Biden says Trump Republicans are a threat to the country. Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Now, I want to be very clear, very clear up front. <clears throat> Not every Republican, not even the majority of Republicans are MAGA Republicans. Not every Republican embraces their extreme ideology. I know, because I've been able to work with these mainstream Republicans. But there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. And that is a threat to this country. Meanwhile, 12 to 15 million unvetted illegals have been allowed to enter the country under Harris-Biden. It is wrong to somehow suggest 
then an undocumented immigrant is a criminal. Being an undocumented immigrant is not a crime. I know what a crime looks like. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. 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 An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal, and we have to correct course in this conversation. We're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the border as criminals. That's correct. We tell that to Nancy Pelosi, Year of Our Lord, 2005. Broken borders. That's an oxymoron, something we can't tolerate. Borders of, of their nature, our definition as a nation, and our protection as a country. Broken borders, that doesn't, they don't exist. We can't tolerate them. So let's stay, say from the start that we all in this body, and I know I can speak very firmly for the Democrats, support strong border control. And it must be part, and the first part, of any comprehensive immigration reform. We have, it is an ob our obligation as elected officials to keep the American people safe and our borders are our first line of defense, one of our li early lines of defense to do that. Democrats support also enforcing laws, current laws, against those who came here illegally and those who hire illegal immigrants. Yet the Bush administration has refused to do just this. Imagine that for all of this talk about illegal immigration to the United States and going after those workers who are working here illegally, and we should, but we also must have employer sanctions. Where are these people working? Why are we not if enforcing the law against employers who hire illegal, uh, illegal undocumented people here? The Bush administration has prosecuted only three employer sanction cases in the last fiscal year. Only three cases. When, yes, when are we going to take this issue seriously? Mr. Speaker, we all know what we must do. Democrats have long called for strong border security, effective law enforcement, and for comprehensive immigration reform. In all that we must do with elected officials, we have the responsibility to make the American people safer and to make America stronger. We can make America stronger, not only at our borders, but, it, but in upholding our values and our principles. I mean, even Bill Clinton said Lake and Riley, who was brutally murdered by an illegal alien, would be alive today had the illegal alien been properly vetted. You had a case in Georgia not very long ago, didn't you? They made an ad about it, about a young woman who'd been killed by an immigrant. Yeah, well, if they'd all been properly vetted, that probably wouldn't have happened. But if they all properly vetted and that doesn't happen, and America is not having enough babies to keep our populations up, so we need immigrants that have been vetted to do work. There wouldn't be a problem. And he couldn't keep people all torn up and upset. Well, there's a lot at stake in this upcoming election. But regardless of who's sitting in the White House, the fuse on the economy has already been lit. Even four years of a conservative president will not be enough to turn our tide on our $35 trillion national debt. And if the left wins, it's like throwing gas on a dumpster fire. You don't have too much control over the election's outcome, but what you can do right now is protect your savings by diversifying into gold with the help of Birch Gold Group. For millennia, gold has stood firm in the face of greedy governments, economic upheavals, and global strife. And you can protect yourself now. Birch Gold will help you convert an IRA or 401k into an IRA in physical gold, tax-free and penalty-free, and it doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. In the past four years, the buying power of the U.S. dollar has declined. The price of gold has increased 40%. Coincidence? We don't think so. 
Visit LarryForGold.com, get your free info kit on gold, and trust Birch Gold to protect your savings. Visit LarryForGold.com today. That's LarryForGold.com today. Americans have had enough of supporting companies that hate our values. Tired of compromise? So am I. It's time to switch to Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They are an example of putting the cause ahead of profits, and that's why I'm proud to partner with them. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage, giving you access to all three major networks, which means you get the same coverage you've been accustomed to without funding the left. When you switch over to Patriot Mobile, you're sending a message that you support the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the sanctity of life, and our military vets and our first responder heroes. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team makes it easy to switch, keep your number, keep your phone, or upgrade. Their team will help you find the best plan for your needs. Just go to PatriotMobile.com slash Larry or call 972-PATRIOT. That's PatriotMobile.com slash Larry or call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation when you use the offer code Larry. Join me and make that switch today. PatriotMobile.com slash Larry. PatriotMobile.com slash Larry or call 972-PATRIOT. Trump gave a long sit-down interview with the anti-Trump editor-in-chief of Bloomberg News. Side note, recall the young lady who happens to be black, who called me the black face of white supremacy? She used to work for the LA Times. Guess where she now works? Bloomberg News. But we digress. The January 6th supposedly non-peaceful transfer of power came up. President Trump, you had, a peace, you, had a peace, you had a peaceful transfer of power compared with Venezuela, but it was by far the most, the worst transfer of power for a long time. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, because this is the, you know, what they like to do. This is what they like to do. Uh, and, question, and, you know, it's very question, interesting. The question, question, President Trump, is would you respect yeah. the decision? When I found out about this interview, I did a little check. He's a man that has not been a big Trump fan over the years. So I had a choice. Do I do this interview or not? I'm glad I did it. But do I do this interview or do I disappoint a lot of people? Because I know a lot of people in the audience. But his view is very different than mine. Let, let me just say. I'm asking you March, a question, Trustor. We had a term, peacefully and patriotically. These were people. If you think an election is crooked, and I do 100%, if you think the day it comes when you can't protest, you take a look at the Democrats. They protested 2016. They're still protesting it. Nobody talks about them. But if we protest, we want to have honest elections. <laughs> Trump says being Fed chairman is an easy gig and people treat you like you're a god. You've gone backwards and forwards about depends whether, on you the want to keep, whether you want to keep Jerome Powell as chair of the Federal Reserve. His term as chair runs on to May 2026. Would you seek to remove, remove or demote him? Look, I think it's the greatest job in government. You show up to the office once a month and you say, let's see, flip a coin. <laughs> and everybody talks about you like you're a god. Oh, what will he do? I mean, before, the guy used to walk into my office, he was like begging, oh, he was a... He was fine. But you did, you did talk, you know, about remo was, you talked about removing him once. I did, because uh, he was keeping the rates too high. Yeah. And I was right. And you would do that again? In fact, he actually dropped them too much when I did this. He, because I said I was threatening to terminate him. There was a question as to whether or not you could. And there was an article in the New York Times, two half pages. One page said I can do it by lawyers. One half page said I couldn't. And that was enough for him. And he dropped the hell out of the rates. He dropped them too much. He went so was <laughs> He dropped them actually too much. OK. Uh, here's the story. I think that if you're a very good president with good sense, you should be able to at least talk to him. Now, I don't say make the decision at all, but I, I mean, I'm, I've been a very successful businessman. I've done really good, much better. Now people are understanding how good I've done because they're seeing it real, much better than the fake news wants to give me credit for. Now, a case can be made against tariffs imposed on non-adversaries, but China is an adversary. And Biden-Harris, while claiming Trump threatening to impose tariffs amount to a tax, retain Trump's China tariffs and impose more. If a country tells me, uh, sir, we like you very much, but we're going to no longer adhere to being in the reserve currency, uh, we're not going to uh, 
salute the dollar anymore. I'll say, that's okay. And uh, you're going to pay a 100 percent tariff on everything you sell into the United States. And we love your product. I hope you sell a lot of it into the United States. But you're going to pay 100 percent tariff. Uh, he will then follow it up by saying, sir, it would be an honor to stay with the reserve currency. I will be — that will be like just playing — that's not even chess, that's checkers. But you don't have other — listen to this. You don't, even, you don't have other people that can talk that way. Trump battled the Bloomberg guy on tariffs and said the guy has been wrong for 25 years. Yes, you're going to find some people who will gain from individual tariffs. The overall effect could be massive. I agree. I agree it's going to have a massive effect, positive effect. It's going to be a positive, not a negative. Well, we're just, just let, let me just tell you. No, no, let me tell you. I know example. how committed you are to this. And it must be hard for you to, you know, spend 25 years talking about tariffs as being Listen. negative and then have somebody <laughs> explain to you that you're totally wrong. It'll have a negative. It will have. I'll go 40, a step further. 40 if million, you don't 40 do million, this, President this Trump, country 40 million, has no 40 chance. million jobs is a lot of jobs to rely on. They're trade. all coming back. Those are, 40 million jobs. Those are 40 million jobs in America that rely on trade. Are you ready? John Deere, great company. They announced about a year ago they're going to build big plants outside of the United States, right? They're going to build them in Mexico. And you threatened they're them also going to build. and they stopped. That's right. I said, if John Deere builds those plants and not selling anything into the United States, they just announced yesterday they're probably not going to build the plants, OK? I kept the jobs here. Can you imagine Kamala sitting down for a combative interview like that? Teleprompter alert. This was supposed to be an unscripted town hall. Watch this. Now look again. Notice they switched off the print when it was clear that the teleprompter was in the shot. So they made the screen go blank to make it appear that Harris was not really reading the prompter when in fact she was really reading the prompter. The only question I ever asked is, are you okay? And sadly, we have seen over the last two weeks since Hurricane Helene. And check out some of the comments people wrote about Kamala's Univision appearance. These are Hispanic viewers, the one that she expects to vote for her overwhelmingly. Look at some of these comments. Está cerrada con tres candados y remachada a la puerta negra. Porque tus padres están celosos y tienen miedo que yo. de pensar que estando encerrada Rut row Kamala Harris was finally asked about reparations My question to you is what's your stance on reparations we all know that America became great you know off the backs of free black labor um how progressive are you on making it a priority and righting America's wrongs. It's understood that you are running for president for all people of America. Mm -hmm. Asking for specifics for black communities doesn't mean, no, don't do for others, but black Americans mm -hmm. are heavily asked to vote Democrat in every election for over half a, a century with very little in return. What are your plans to address these very important issues and change that narrative? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zeke. I appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you for your work. So to your point, um, yes, I am running to be a president for all Americans. That being said, I do have clear eyes about the disparities that exist and the context in which they exist, meaning history, to your point. So my agenda, well, first of all, on the point of reparations, I, it has to be studied. There's no question about that. And I've been very clear about that position. In terms of my immediate plan, I will tell you a few of the following. One, as it relates to the economy, which is a lot of what you have addressed, 
look, I grew up in the middle class. My mother, you know, worked hard, raised me and my sister. And it should be studied. That's not what she told the brothers when she was running in 2020 and spoke at an Al Sharpton event. But in the area of reparations for descendants of Africans and slaves. If you elected president, would you sign that bill if it came across your desk? When I am elected president, I will sign that bill. <laughs> So we've gone from saying I'll sign the bill to saying I'll study it. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Speaking of keeping it real, don't you wish you could walk into a coffee shop, get what you want, and walk out without paying? You know, just like regular folks. How do you know they're afraid of losing when a pro Harris group puts out an ad to attack people for supporting Trump, who of course oozes toxic masculinity? Check out this ad. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man, man. And I'm man enough. I'm man enough to enjoy a barrel-proof bourbon. Neat. Man enough to cook my steak rare. Man enough to deadlift 500, then braid the out of my daughter's hair. You think I'm afraid to rebuild a carburetor? I eat carburetors for breakfast. I ain't afraid of bears. That's what bear hugs are for. I'll tell you another thing I sure am not afraid of. Women. I'm not afraid of women. I'm not afraid of women. They want to control their bodies? I say go for it. They want to use IVF to start a family? I'm not afraid of families. They want to be childless cat ladies? Have all the cats you want. Woman wants to be president? Well, I hope she has the guts to look me right in the eye and accept my full-throated endorsement. Because I'm man enough to support women. Man enough to know what kind of donuts I like. Man enough to admit I'm lost, even when I refuse to ask for directions. Man enough to not ban young women from reading Little Women. Or one of those pants books that the sisters like. I'm man enough to raw dog a flight. It sucked. Not worth it. I'm man enough to be emotional in front of my wife. In front of my kids. In front of my horse. I'm man enough to tell you that I cry at Love Actually. Goodwill Hunting. West Side Story. That and Brennan. And I'm sick of so-called men domineering, belittling, and controlling women just so they can feel more powerful. That's not how my mama raised me. I love women. I love women who support their families. Women who decide not to have families. Women who take charge. And I'm man enough to help them win. Better, better, better get a bucket on the throw up. I guess so. A bucket for Monsieur. I said, young man, put yourself Now get this, the person who produced the ad, supposedly not in coordination with the Harris campaign, is a former Jimmy Kimmel producer. And the producer said this, with the rise of role models like Tim Walls and Doug Imhoff on the national stage, I think the left is finally finding its footing on how to talk about masculinity. I hope this campaign can start to shape that conversation, end of quote. But get this, the Cowboys, the ranchers and the farmers in the ad are actors and comedians. Apparently they couldn't find any real farmers and cowboys and ranchers to appear in this pro Harris Walsh ad. And then poster Frank Luntz went to an outdoor diner to watch the ad with a focus group of undecided men. And the reaction was probably not what Harris hoped for.
more beans, Mr. Taggart. I'd say you've had enough. <laughs> First, she was middle class. I grew up a middle class kid. My mother was hardworking. She raised me and my sister, Maya. She saved up. And it was only by the time I was a teenager that she could afford to, to actually buy her first home. Well, I'll start with this. Um, I grew up a middle class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. I grew up a middle class kid raised by a hard working mother who worked and saved and was able to buy our first home when I was a teenager. When it comes to the economy, do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I was raised by a hard working mother who saved up. And by the time I was a teenager, she was able to afford to buy our first home. And I come from the middle class. Then she was working class. Give it another week and a half. And it's, I was born dirt poor and lived on food stamps. It was never easy for me. I was born a poor black child. I was in high school when my father was able to scrape together enough money to move us from the trailer park into our first apartment. I remember the pride my Jamaican father, who just got a job as a professor, felt when he took his first walk around the neighborhood. get this straight. The left went after Sarah Palin for supposedly being not ready for prime time, and nobody called them sexist. You've cited Alaska's proximity to Russia mm -hmm. as part of your foreign policy experience. What did you mean by that? That Alaska has a very narrow maritime border between a foreign country, Russia, and on our other side, the land uh, boundary that we have with uh, Canada. It, it's funny that a comment like that was uh, kind of made to, uh, care, I don't know, you know, reporters. Mocked. Yeah, mocked, I guess that's the word, yeah. I can see Russia from my house. <laughs> um, well, explain to me why that enhances your foreign policy credentials? Well, it certainly does because our our next door neighbors are foreign countries. They're in the state that I am the executive of. And have you ever been in involved with any negotiations, for example, with the Russians? We have trade missions back and forth. We we do it's very important when, when you consider even national security issues with Russia as Putin rears his head and, and uh, comes into the airspace of the United States of America, where, where do they go? It, it's Alaska. It's just right over the border. It is from Alaska that we send those out to make sure that an eye is being kept on this very powerful nation, Russia, because they are right there. They are right next to, um, to our state. But when the right disparages Kamala Harris as clueless and brain dead, it's because, well, they're racist and sexist. I think it's very important, as you have heard from so many incredible leaders, for us at every moment in time, and certainly this one, to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present, and to be able to contextualize it, 
to understand where we exist in the history and in the moment as it relates not only to the past but the future. Fascism card alert. Two more big lies about Trump. I mean, it, it could be higher. It could be higher. Donald Trump is a threat to all that we hold dear. But I don't want you to confuse that intense worry with any absence of confidence in our men and women in uniform, who, by the way, right now and for literally every day of my entire lifetime have been putting their lives in harm way in defense of all that we hold dear. It is such a shame, though, that part of that sacrifice, part of that fight, may very well be standing up to a leader here at home. It is, again, why this election is so significant, because Donald Trump, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like he didn't try last time around. And at times, even potentially successful. Look at what he did with the Muslim ban, for instance. Look at what he did at Lafayette Square, where literally, uh, virtually gassed on citizens, our fellow citizens. He, time and again, tried to push the limits in a truly fascist manner of what the presidency is meant to be. Sigh. First, it wasn't a Muslim ban. It was travel restrictions on a few countries that did not properly vet those who were allowed to come into our country. There was no restriction, for example, on Muslims from India, the country with the largest Muslim population, and the Obama administration had similar travel restrictions. Look at this headline from factcheck.org. Now let's turn to Lafayette. The former congressman said, look at what he did at Lafayette Square, where he literally gassed our citizens, our fellow citizens. But NBC wrote, when federal police officers violently cleared protesters from the city's Lafayette Square in June 2020, they did it so a contractor could install fencing, not to let President Trump hold a photo opportunity at a nearby church, an investigation by the Interior Department's Inspector General has found. That finding is likely to surprise many critics of Trump, who have long asserted the president or his AG ordered the operation to pave the way for an act of political theater. It is also the central allegation of a federal lawsuit by Black Lives Matter against the DOJ. We did not find evidence that the park police officials made that decision in order to permit the president of the United States to visit the park or for a photo out at St. John's Church across the street. End of quote. Oh, that's very different. Never mind. <laughs> And don't forget the very fine people on both sides. Charlottesville lie they won't die because they keep on repeating it. We have been leading on pushing back on anti-Semitism. But just go back to Charlottesville uh, in the Trump era. Remember, Charlottesville was the Jews will not Jews replace, will not us, replace yeah. us. And that's when Donald Trump said, hey, there's fine people on both sides. You take it away, CNN's Jake Tapper. Uh, let, let's uh, play some of the sound uh, of President Trump uh, back in 2017, saying he had said today that he answered the question uh, perfectly. Uh, let's take a listen. They showed up in Charlottesville. Excuse me. To protest. Excuse me. They didn't put themselves down as human. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Now, elsewhere in those remarks, the president did condemn neo-Nazis and white supremacists. So he's not saying that the neo-Nazis and white supremacists are very fine people, but he is saying people protesting alongside those neo-Nazis and white supremacists are very fine people. Do you ever wake up and realize your life has no purpose? Do I have a death wish, Morgan asked. Maybe I did. I thought this would be our final run ever. We had made millions and millions of dollars, but God had other plans. Peter Lowe, the one-time drug dealer turned pastor, along with two others, will be executed at 12 midnight local time. You can be in heaven or you can be in hell. The choice is yours. I found Christ in here and he forgave me. 
My name is Peter Lone, and I will be executed in two hours. Jesus is for free, and salvation is a gift. Do you believe in Jesus? A watershed moment on October 26, 2024, in an unprecedented move, John Rourke of Blue Line Moving, along with Nelson McElveen of Century H2O, will work with East Palestine, Ohio Mayor Trent Conaway to donate water filtration systems to every single household. Quote, I would like to ensure that every household that would like a water filtration system gets one to protect their family from potential toxic threats so as to have peace of mind when drinking and cooking, that they are consuming safe water, close quote, says Mr. McElveen. Environmental government agencies claim the environment tests are fine, but locals disagree. Two private companies are stepping in to support the residents of East Palestine. At Century H2O, we believe that everyone deserves access to clean, healthy water. That's why we're dedicated to providing innovative water treatment solutions that remove harmful toxins, balance pH, and enrich water with essential minerals, supporting your overall health and well-being. They are donating 10% of every purchase to provide under-sink water treatment systems to families impacted by the 2023 train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. Century h2o.com that's with an s s e n t r y h 2 o.com blue line moving is a veteran owned full service moving company dedicated to serving families across south florida as well as nationwide over the past 10 years whether it's moving furniture organizing items or packing your belongings we go the extra mile to make sure it's all done right we provide clients with an affordable and stress-free moving experience every step of the way. Blue Line Moving and Storage.com. That's Blue Line Moving and Storage.com. Hear about this? Someone screamed behind JD Vance at this town hall in North Carolina. Turns out the lady's chair broke, but Vance didn't know that, and he leaped into action. Or well, the federal government, there's a lot of. Hold on, just a second, man. We, we okay? You didn't build that. Ka Kamala Harris built this platform behind us. That's what happened. We, we, we doing okay, ma'am? We good? Woo! Superhero landing. Finally, ah, the party of open-mindedness and tolerance. Dirty Turkish Harker back flattening Martin Philip Bucket Martin Perkaluma Burton Dirty Bush Martin Martin and Adam There is a huge difference between first class and steerage. This is our first trip together. Hey everybody in first class. I thought he was giving us first class tickets, but he lied. <laughs> well, we all went dirty AB. <laughs> But at least it's our first trip. He's trying. Look at him. Aww. Look at y'all. The first time. Oh, it must be nice. Look at y'all. Separate. They gave y'all water already. <laughs> Ew. Gross. Ew. Gross. Ew. Gross. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> this never gets old. never get old but this sure has from the wackos on the left to the maggots on the right they know i'm beating kamala this race won't even be tied 
her policies are nuts, so oh, she's out her goddamn mind. She just repeats the same thing, regurgitating her lines. She thinks that immigration without paperwork is good. Clearly not too much power underneath Kamala's hood. Borders are, it's what you are. Borders are, borders are. Cackling Kamala, you're dumb. Mass inflation imminent if she weasels herself in. If that don't sound like fun to you, then you better help me win. I promise I'll secure you, you'll be in better hands. It'd be a flippin' free-for-all with what Kamala plans. Borders are, it's what you are. Borders are, borders are. Laugh it up, Kamala. This lady, this lady, she's kept rolling crazy. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. Hope you enjoyed. We've got a country to save. Brought to you by my friends at investyrefi.com. Invest in America like I do. And by Freedom Chat. Freedom Chat has true end-to-end -end encryption, no storage of messages on the server, and no commercial use of user data. Speak freely and message privately. Download the app today and subscribe to my Freedom Chat channel at Larry Elder for exclusive posts and never-before-seen content. We also thank Epic Times, Old Glory Bank, Patriot Mobile, and Birch Gold. Make sure to follow or subscribe to my channel on whatever platform you are using, whether X, YouTube, Facebook, or Rumble. And be sure to patronize our sponsors. And remember, we've got a country to save. Man enough to deadlift 500, then braid the out of my daughter's hair. A, a what now?